OPC delivers a great gaming chair at a competitive price compared to the mainstream brands. With multiple color options to choose from, there is bound to be a perfect match for your setup. Jackson uses one daily with his setup and so should you. Check the link down below to learn more and pick one up today. Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and I'm here with part two of the free gaming PC build video. Now this video is going to be a lot shorter than the first one due to the fact that I only did a couple changes to the PC since the first video, but that's a good thing because everything's working properly. First off, I will be showcasing some benchmarks and a couple popular titles at the very end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But for those who missed the first episode, you can either watch the eye in the top right corner and see that first episode, or just listen to this quick recap. Now this PC was actually created years ago by a friend of our channel manager, Zach. Well, what used to be it, we actually did a full revamp of it. The specs are an i7-2600 with six gigs of RAM and a GTX 962 gig. The reason we got this machine was because the system was boot looping for the guy who originally owned it, and he was really close to upgrading his system anyways and decided to use it as a time to ditch this system and buy something new. So when he actually heard that there was a local PC hardware tech channel, us, he decided to donate it to us for some content, so a special thanks again to him for doing that. Now the system was originally a Dell XPS 8300 that he added a GPU to, hence the 960. So what we did was take that system, tear it out of its old case, and throw it into a Cooler Master Q300L, and also add a 550 watt Seasonic Focus semi-modular power supply. Alright, so now that that's out of the way and we're all caught up, what's new? Well, the downside of this OEM motherboard is the fact that it doesn't have a USB 3.0 header for the front I.O. So I had to go out and purchase a USB 3.0 to 2.0 adapter so we could use the front I.O. Even though it is limited to USB 2.0 speeds, it actually does work. Next, I had to figure out the front I.O. connectors, so I looked on Google for a diagram and managed to find one to match up the important things like power and reset switch. It was a very weird orientation and it took a lot of Googling and diving into some different forums to eventually find it. Now after I had the system up and running, I decided to do some cleaning up and maintenance of the whole system to make it look as pretty as we possibly can, and BAM! We now have ourselves a budget used parts PC for 1080p gaming. Now if I were to value this system, I would say it would be around $400, including all the upgrades and current hardware. Now the value of the system is honestly what I would not pay though, because on the used market, I would be looking for some sort of a deal. I would probably pay max about $300 to $320 for this system due to the fact that the 960 in here is only a 2 gigabyte variant and will be limited in some modern titles. Also the 6 gigs of RAM in the system, while it would be fine for gaming, could be better if it was 8 gigabytes. I plan on switching it to 8 gigabytes if and when we decide to sell it to someone who needs it. Now before I get into the benchmarks, I wanted to give some thought on the Cooler Master Q300L. I love the way this case looks. It's a very small micro ATX case, but it does have some problems. One, the bottom fan filter is total junk. It's only held in by a few plastic stoppers on the bottom of the case, and even picking up the PC once or even just sliding across the floor causes those stoppers to fall out and the fan filter just gets bent to hell. I honestly tossed that thing in the garbage. It was a real annoyance. Secondly, while the fan filters on the top and the front of the case add a good aesthetic to the case, like it looks really good, they do become very annoying if you plan to move this PC around. You really cannot pick up this PC unless you're just holding it from the bottom without the filters shifting in your hands because they're only magnetic, which is kind of annoying because this PC would be great for travel because it is a perfect small form factor case. There is another version that does come with handles, so that's something to consider. But since this case is only $40 and sometimes it's even on sale for under $30, bucks, I really can't complain too much because it does deliver a unique design for an affordable cost. Now how about we show you those benchmarks? All tests are done at 1080p and the settings used will be shown on screen. Sky's the limit. I 
Now, as you can tell, this guy can put out some pretty decent numbers for what it is. The i7-2600 is still kicking it in esports titles and even some higher end games, and the 960, while be it on lower settings, can still play games like PUBG and Fortnite pretty easily. Now, there was some obvious stuttering that seems to link back to the 2 gig variant of the 960, but one thing I want to note is I found out the hard drive in this system is only 5900 RPM, a very slow hard drive. It has caused a lot of lockups and issues in day-to-day -day tasks within Windows. So an SSD upgrade would honestly take this system to the next level. And that honestly wraps this video up here, guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment to Q300L in the comment section down below if you made it this far. I honestly had a lot of fun messing with this PC, and this is probably going to be the last video on it. But if you do want to see some more content based around it, comment down below and let me know what you want to see. Special thanks again to the guy for donating the PC originally. We're definitely going to get it into somebody else's hands who will definitely take advantage of using it and pass along a really awesome PC to someone who probably does deserve it. Thanks again, guys. Peace out.